everyone and welcome to day 30 of our RV10 build. Today we are continuing work on the horizontal stabilizer. This day was also actually Tyler's birthday. So you're going to notice later on that he's not in the footage quite as much, but that's because we had lots of friends and family who were all calling to wish him a happy birthday and catch up. So he was inside on the phone with them. But He's in and out throughout the, the video, but just so you knew what was going on and why Tyler wasn't around for big chunks of it. Getting back to the build. So as I mentioned, we are continuing work here on the horizontal stabilizer, and I think this was the first time that we were using our new Longeron yoke that we had purchased at Oshkosh uh, the month prior. And... Um, I went over like the Longeron yoke in another video. I'll put a link for that um, below and probably in the upper right hand corner in case any of you aren't familiar. Um, but it's really, it, it was something we talked about getting. It was really nice to have and especially in some different places here where you're going to see having that little hook nose that's on the the Laundron yoke, I think I called it like the gonzo nose that it has, um, really does come in quite handy working around some of the different flanges and everything that you come across. And it was nice and helpful here, for example, getting the two halves of each of the stringer assemblies riveted to each other, but it did have some limitations. For example, even here with the stringer assemblies, I'm not sure if you can tell, but there's, um, they come together in the middle and then they each have a flange that faces in opposite directions. And it was easy to slide the Longeron yoke over the end to go and squeeze all of those rivets there holding the two halves of the stringer assembly together. But for that section there that's between those two inboard ribs, um, there was no way to get that yoke over one of the flanges and then get the ram and the rest of the pneumatic squeezer over the other one. It just, there was no way to finagle it in there and with the two inboard ribs blocking um, the way I couldn't just slide it over the edge like you can see doing here on the two uh, on either end of the two different stringer assemblies. So for this, I uh, just used one of the offset rivet sets there with our rivet gun and the bucking bar. And kind of unique, you know, having one of us working out here by herself, but I just used some of our clamps and clamped down one of the stringer assemblies to the table to hold everything nice and um, still while I was using the rivet gun and that worked out just fine. It also actually was pretty nice with the squeezer as well to uh, to have it holding everything there in place in lieu of the extra set of hands that both of us are normally accustomed to working with. So, but it worked out just great um, between the Longeron yoke and then using that offset rivet set was able to get everything all squared away there with the two stringer assemblies and the, I think it's the stringer web and the two inboard ribs. I was like, holy shit, you're fast. Ta da! It's like, that horizontal stabilizer has invisible skins. <laughs> Had to laugh a little bit because it was his birthday after all, but anyway. So now that you have all that put together, you Clico it to the front spar and you start inserting all of the other ribs except for the two outboard ribs on either side. And the nice thing is that the little flanges there on the forward edge of the ribs, they fit really nice and snug against the flanges of the spar so it's easy to get them set into place. They'll kind of hold themselves into place and then you can easily turn it over and start Clicoing from there. And I was trying to explain here what I was doing, but the audio didn't turn out so great, so I'm just gonna tell you here in the voiceover. Um, it says in the instructions that you're not supposed to rivet those two inboard ribs um, during this time when you are riveting the others. The reason being that the nose ribs that you're going to attach later, they don't line up those ribs and the nose ribs for all of the other ribs. They only line up and go through the same holes for those two inboard ribs. And so you don't want to put a rivet in there yet because you're gonna rivet it together once the nose ribs are attached. And just to make sure that I don't accidentally make an oopsie, what I like to do is just put Clicos in all of those holes just to make sure that I don't accidentally stick a rivet in there because you can't put a rivet in the hole if there's a Clico in the hole. 
So that's all I was trying to explain there is just something kind of nice. Another thing is that you are using different size rivets for this process because of where the ribs are attaching over part of the, um, the spar caps and then where they're just attaching to the spar web. And so that's going to require adjusting the uh, pneumatic squeezer. And so one thing I don't know if I've mentioned before is it's nice to have a pair of calipers, digital calipers, just to help you set everything. The other thing is that the little chart that we have that tells us uh, what the distances we need to set between the rivet sets for the different size rivets is in fractions. And fortunately in the book, they happen to have a really nice little chart on 5-32 that converts all the different fractions into decimals. And one thing I found that was really nice and helpful was I put a little colored tab there in the book so that that way when I come to a different part where it says to set the, the pneumatic squeezer to set the distance between the rivet sets to a certain distance, I can easily just pull on that tab, find where it is that um, the distance I need, and go ahead and get it set very easily. It's just nice to have the different colored tabs for that and for other things in the book if there's a place you know you're going back and forth to instead of spending too much time just like flipping through everything. Just mark it with a little colored tab, nice and easy. This was a great thing here that we had, um, and this is not something we purchased for the bill, but it's something we happen to have that's come in very nice, especially with the horizontal stabilizer, just with the length of it. Uh, we have a little giant ladder, and um, what we're able to do with the one that we purchased is break it apart into two pieces, so it basically makes two ladders, and then we bought this... Uh, work plank that they have that allows us to turn the one ladder that's now become two ladders into scaffolding. And so that was really great to be able to stretch out along the edge of the workbench. And it just gave us a little bit of a boost. It didn't need much, but enough so that with the stabilizer set there on the table, you could look down into it and it helped with lining up the the nose ribs and getting those into place and you'll see in future videos too it was really helpful then as we start riveting everything and you've got to get your hand in there with a bucking bar to rivet some of this stuff into place so i know there's other um Similar things you could get. It's not like this is any sort of an endorsement about going and getting a, a little giant ladder system, but there's other things that I'm sure you can get that are pretty similar. Uh, it's just the, the concept behind it is what's really there. It's If you don't have something to kind of give you a little boost, uh, it makes it a little bit trickier to get inside and get your hand in there and see what you're doing and here you can see a little bit better how it uh how it actually works and again it was nice to be able to sit on it to get to the the nose ribs there but then also to stand on it to get inside you could also i guess just take a ladder and if you don't mind just like a little step ladder move it back and forth but the point was having a little boost really uh came in very handy and this system just happened to work out because as you can see it stretches almost the full length of the horizontal stabilizer. So again, it just came in really nice and handy. So we started riveting, I think, half of two of the nose ribs to the skin and suddenly realized, I'm not sure if y'all noticed, but we hadn't primed the insides of the skins. So everywhere where the ribs and the spars were going to be connecting to the skins with the rivets, we had not primed that when we primed all the other parts in the previous video. So we decided that was a pretty good place to call it quits for the night since we were going out for Tyler's birthday and we needed to get stop and uh, prime everything in there before moving on any further. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Be sure to hit that little bell icon, that way you get notified anytime I post a new video. And to keep the most up to date on our build status, be sure to follow me on Instagram at plain.lady so that way you can see exactly what it is that we're working on every day.